What's up, guys? It's Moped Jet. Why is it Moped Jet? I want a moped, I want a jet, and that's it. And in this episode, I got a new t-shirt. If you like this shirt, look at it. It's art right there. Made from Emporium. Yours truly. If you don't got some Emporium, if you want this shirt, you can have this shirt. I'll give it to you. For free, even. Just got to go to bonfire.com slash store slash emporium all one word and buy it and I'll and you get it for free that's how that works I just got back from the gym um, and also I'm gonna be up front I had an episode before this episode I didn't just skip a week I recorded a week but I was super tired in that episode and while why do I got my headphones on I'm not listening to anything I was super tired in that episode, and while I was recording or editing it, I usually skip through to try to find a clip, and while I was skipping through, the very few seconds that I saw of my episode, I was bored. So I was like, oh no, I'm not putting this out. And sometimes that happens, yo. You can't be the best all the time. Sometimes the best loses. Look at LeBron James. Uh, so yeah. I'm not going to subject you guys to that because I'm only going to give subject you guys to the best. Uh, I think in that episode, I did have some announcements that I didn't make, but I don't... Well, basically, I, I took a week off because I, I went to visit my grandparents' grave for Memorial Day. Um, and I miss them. I, I'm just trying to make light of it. I'm, I'm trying to joke so I don't cry because I, I really do miss them. They were great. Great people in my life, huge influences, made me the man who I am today, and it was really nice to go down there uh, and see some of my, some of my cousins and stuff. I'm not really that close to my distant relatives, so it's really nice when I get to go down there, get to know them a little bit, uh, a little bit more, and it, it was really cool. There was a couple, a couple of hiccups, you know, traveling with your family. I don't know if you have a resentful, spiteful dad, but I do. Uh, I don't know if he's resentful and spiteful, but there's definitely something going on with him. Uh, he just does this thing that when we all get together as a family, he wants to try to cause a problem. I don't understand what that's about. Like, we'll all just be chilling, being a happy family, and then he'll just come out of nowhere and try to talk about someone's life <laughs> and just ruin the whole vibe. And, yeah, I don't know what's up with that. I told him he needs therapy, and then he thought that was an insult, not a suggestion, and that, that's where we are today. That's what happens when you're, you tell, you can't tell another black person to go to therapy. It's impossible. It's impossible. We all don't think we need therapy. Don't tell me I need therapy. I probably do need therapy, but I'm not going to go, you know? It's just, there's something in me. I'm not going to put that on all black people, but there's something in me at least, and obviously in my family, that it's like, if you go to a therapist, it's a feeling that you can't handle your own shit. You have to, and I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that if you if you don't. I mean, if you do go to a therapist and and you can't handle your own shit and you admit to that, but I just feel like there's something in me that wants that is convinced that I can if I don't have it handled already. I'm not as close minded to it and I'm not as oblivious to my errors as some people with that mindset. I know there's things I can work on, and because of that. I feel like I don't need to go sit down and have and pay somebody to tell me uh, tell me what I need to do or suggest to me what I need to do with my mind. I'd rather just do comedy and just talk about my trauma and make a joke out of it, you know? It's a lot more fun that way. And it's only for like five minutes rather than sitting for an hour or 30 minutes in some leather chair that's going to give me a hemorrhoid, you know? I was looking at the news today. I regret doing that while running, and I don't know if anyone's been keeping up with the old war that's going on, the old Ukraine versus Russian war, but it looks like Russia has settled in southern Ukraine or has took it over, and when I saw that, I'm like, oh shit, because I completely forgot about the war until that, and I feel like a lot of people have, and even if you are like, no, no, I still have my Ukraine flag, or even some people who are the hipsters, they might have a Russian flag. Uh, but I have a feeling that all of us kind of covered our eyes to that thing by now. And we're trying to work on our summer vacation, you know. But shout out to the people in Ukraine. I hope that they 
get through it. I can't believe that it, that something like that is even happening. When I when I hear about things like this, and I know that you can't just stick your nose into everything, I always question what is the UN's army for? Was it NATO? I thought that was for things like this. You know, so not one country is necessarily coming in to meddle between two countries because that can spark a world war. That was the whole reason for the UN being made, I thought, to make sure that there was no other world wars. And I thought NATO was supposed to be that neutral army that can be an armed force that's not assigned to a specific country so no one can, like, take up arms and seek revenge against, you know, NATO's country. Because that would be just the amalgamation of all the countries as a military. But maybe I'm completely ignorant and completely wrong because I didn't pay attention to army shit and military stuff because I don't like war. Yes, I was the kid that didn't like war. Wow. I'm so unique. Who would have thought? Man, well, I was at the gym. And weird things happen at the gym. I think I tried talking about this in my boring episode. Let me try to make it less boring this time. A lot of weird things happen at the gym. We're like, I know that we're all getting like swole or trying to. And let's be honest, some of us use enhancements. As in, not necessarily steroids, not crack. But they, you know, they drink like an energy drink. I'm an energy drink guy. Uh, They take some powder. I'm not a powder guy. Um, You know, creatine. There's probably some herbal supplements out there that hype you up. Kratom. So there's a lot of people out there like peak there but that makes a lot of people act weird especially the guys i don't know if girls are so big on like enhancing before they go into the gym or powering or powering up before they go into the gym powering themselves up but guys definitely do and it makes them act strange in a way like i was using the bathroom at the end of my run and next to me a guy is sitting down he comes in he just is whistling whistling and tapping his feet while i'm assuming dropping a load and i was just thinking is that necessary it's like seven in the morning and that's disgusting but he's sitting here whistling dixie i'm like bro just go run or just go home don't use this toilet and do that people that sit in public restrooms i've had another run in when i was in the i was in the a restroom at a restaurant that I worked at. And there was another guy, of course, but it wasn't between us two. It was a third party, a guy who was washing his hands. He just comes in, and he's washing his hands, and he just goes, oh, don't hold it on my account, boys. Let it rip. I don't care. Grump it up. I don't care if it's like a buzzsaw. You know, he's making all these r- weird remarks about us and our buttholes. And he was just like, let the trumpets flare and things like that while he was washing his hands. And they just kept going like, no, you guys aren't going to do it on my account. You guys are going to hold that all in. Like when he was done washing his hands, he's like our coach. He's like, oh, do what you want, man, and left. Hey, man, it's not that I didn't want you to hear. It's that sometimes people's buttholes don't have to make such noise. (laughs) I was trying to use the bathroom. I don't need a coach. I don't need to appease your fetish, first of all. That was probably something for him. I'm glad I didn't appease his fetish. I'm glad the guy next to me was on my team. I should have got his number. Could have been poo partners. All right, I'm done with toilet. I hate toilet humor, to be honest. I feel like toilet... I mean, shout out to the comedians that love toilet humor, but... It doesn't do it for me, man. It never did it for me, even when I was a kid. I just thought poop and pee and stuff like that was gross. Why? Because it goes in a toilet. So, and surprisingly, there's a lot of people in their 30s that get on microphones and like to make, like, for some reason, at the open mics, there's always some guy that thinks it's cool to give us, like, a update about the fact that they just took a shit before going up on stage. I was like, oh, guys, I just took a massive dump and the bathroom is so nice. Well, the bathroom is not good. Y'all need to get your shit together while I'm taking my shit. And I'm just like, oh, ha, 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 No. Talk about something else. I feel like other, I feel like comedians, 
I'm not trying to shit on people's set because I just started six months ago. At the beginning of the year. But I just... I feel like if you have to do toilet humor and sex humor only, like if that's... Like, like you can have a couple of jokes like that, whatever. But I've heard a lot of sets where that's pretty much... They just switch off. Toilet joke, sex joke. Toilet joke, sex joke. Drug joke, sex joke, toilet joke. Drug joke, sex joke, toilet joke. And I'm just like, bro. <laughs> no. Why? Because the guy before you just did that. And the girl before you did that as well. Not so much toilet, but it's definitely sex joke, sex joke, sex joke, looks joke. Women are different joke. I don't know, man. Look at me giving advice to someone who just started. But it's just like, I've always, when I do things, I'm always trying to stand out or at least do things differently. I'm always inspired by what's going on. And I'm like, I don't like to do things that I feel like I don't need to be a part of. You know what I'm saying? If I can't bring something I feel would be necessary or would attribute to the art form or to the industry, why would I uh, get involved with it? You know, that's how my brain works. And I look at comedy and I looked at it and I was like, I can do this. And not only can I do this, I feel like I could do it a little different than the people around me and the people I've seen. Not that I can be one of the greatest, does I can be one of the most different is all. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like my performance definitely, um, my performance definitely re uh, reflects that. People seem to come up to me, well not come up to me, but I seem to just get a response. And I know that my jokes are, are a different angle because I make sure they are. And I deliver them in a different way. Like I said, they're more, like I said before, they're more observational and stuff, so... And I don't, like, write punchlines. And a lot of people write punchlines. And that's cool if you can. I can't. That's why I don't. I actually envy people that can come up with a joke. Because people come up with some really good jokes. I'm just like, man, how would you sit down and think about all that from start to finish? It's so good. But, yeah. Anyway, I like comedy. That's pretty much what I'm saying. I like what I'm doing. And I like this album I'm working on. It's, it's going really well, and I think I'll wrap up the podcast with this. I'm just going to give you guys a little summary, because I'm never going to... I won't say never, never say never, but... Um, artists do this really weird thing where they want to do something, at least me and artists I look up to, and I've noticed some artists I've known. We get trapped in our own concepts, in our own messaging, in our own like way we want to build stuff, and we want the world to kind of know the subtleties that we add in, but we don't want to tell the world. And we kind of want to explain it, but we don't at the same time because we don't want to give it away. It's like a magician and show all of his tricks. And we kind of want to, like, save it for the interview. In a way, like, if you ask an artist, like, oh, is this album secretly this backwards? Or, you know, if it has this secret meaning in this song, they, they like to get a little coy and sometimes touch their lips, even when it's completely obvious what the song's about. But I'm not going to do that. So in this last part, I'm going to just pretty much tell you the whole concept of this album. And the concept of this album is time. And I only say this because this morning, I saw one of my acquaintances, distant acquaintances, literally I've not seen him since I was like 19, post on Facebook, and I'm old, because I still check Facebook and use Facebook, even. But uh, he was on Facebook, and he posted this long status about how he wishes he could have a time machine. And he was asking if anyone else felt this way. He wished he had a time machine, and he can go back and redo a lot of things. Um, because he says, like, a lot of things he did is makes it a lot of... makes his life hard now. It makes him hard to do things now. And I left a comment, even though we're not friends and I haven't seen him in 10 years, <laughs> that, uh, hey man, like, there's no such thing as a time machine. You don't need one. You don't need one. You have so much time ahead of you, because we're around the same age. Uh, just make the best of that time. So that's pretty much, and that made me think about my album concept, because that's pretty much what this album is about. It's about my mistakes. It's about some of the things I did in the past about some of the grudges I've held uh, that you just can't fix. You can't fix by holding on to and wishing it was different and wondering why it didn't go different. You just can't. 
you have to move on and try to make the best of what you have left, which is just time and opportunity ahead of you. And that's what I did. And with this album, I'm, I'm going to try to paint both narratives that time keeps going no matter what. And you're going to make mistakes. You're going to wish you did different things. And even now that you've done these mistakes, you can only avoid those mistakes. You're going to make future mistakes. It's going to happen. It's all about the steps you take, though, and how you choose to react to those times that shape like who you can be and who you are. It really define who you are, even. So my album is pretty much a little bit of that, a little bit of what actually happened in my past and what I want to happen in my future. So it's pretty. It's I think it's a pretty cool album. I think it's actually definitely the most mature. And my last, my last project was definitely just like it wasn't a throwaway, but it didn't really have a concept. It was just a couple of songs I strung together, just rapping, really getting my pen together. But my last album. I guess two albums ago, Max Fleischer. That was my most mature album, I think, so far. Which is funny to say, because I was only like 21, 22 when I made that album. But in terms of the content, as in like my insecurities, my, my perspectives on life, and the system, and things like that. But this one is definitely going to be mature and personal, and I'm really proud of it. I've, I've been proud of all my projects so far. Um, or I wouldn't have put them out, but this one I'm, I can like stand next to and be like, Hey guys, I have something and it's called this. You should go check it out. Uh, And I can't wait to like really invest in it and and make the media for it and try to get the merch for it. It's going to be cool. Um, I'm even going to try to perform it a little bit and see what, see what the people think. Um, but yeah, this album's all about time. And a little quick message to y'all. If you guys feel like that guy on Facebook, bro, so much time. You messed up in the past. Cool. Use your time in the future then. Remember your mistakes. Maneuver accordingly. This is Moped Jet. Why is it called Moped Jet? I want a moped and I want a jet. And that's it. Make sure you check out the Linktree, Linktree, which is linktr.ee for some reason, slash josh.ua, all one word. And... Yeah, be cool to each other.